Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, an evangelist at Microsoft in the UK. In this screencast, I want to build on my last screencast, which was all about connecting OLAP data to geospatial data using reporting services in SQL Server. You may remember if you watched that one that uh, I managed to color code a map in the United States based on some OLAP sales data and plot that on the map, as you can see in the finished report here. But I want to get a bit more detail in this report, and wouldn't it be good if I could click on one of these um, state icons and find out what's happening in each sales territory, much in the same way as we can drill down in OLAP data. So I want to show you how to do that. So I'm going to go back to my reporting site, and from here I can select the Documents tab to bring up the Office ribbon, and I can create a new document. In this case I want to create a new Report Builder report. I'm going to quickly run through creating this report using the map wizard. And what I want to do here is to do a lower level of my last report. And so I'm going to get some new spatial data together, still using the same connections as I did in my last report. So first of all I need to use that US Census connection to go and get all the cities that we're going to be interested in. What I want to do is to get hold of the cities. I want the city ID, the state ID, the name of the city, and its geometry to define its boundary. And from the state, I want the state name. All will become clear in a minute. I do want to embed a Bing Maps layer this time around, and I'm going to use the road layer. I'm going to do a colour analytical map like I did last time. And as before, I'm going to go and get some data from an OLAP source to do that. So I need to go and get to my cube and get hold of some information from there. And this time what I'm interested in is I'm interested in cities. And I want to make sure again I'm just filtering on the USA. So the country is going to be equal to USA. I'm setting my filter options at the top here. Okay. And now I want some business measures again. So reseller sales are sold by city, so I can use any of the measures that are in here. I'll take the sales amount. And as soon as I do that, you can start to see we've got proper information. That's all I need from here. We could add richer information in if we wanted to. As before, we need to work out how these two sets of data are joined together. And it's on the name of the city. And you can see the two highlighted here. The value I want to visualise is the sum of the reseller amount. And you can start to see some splodges on the data there. And I will use a red, green, yellow, setting for that, and click finish. Probably want to make all this a bit bigger, so I'm going to get hold of the control and make the map nice and big, so we can see what's going on. Click on the map control. I can also zoom in a bit. And we can start to see some of those colours appearing of the boundaries of the various cities. Now I'm not going to run this report at the moment, because at the moment it's going to return every city that's in the United States, and that's quite a lot of data, and quite a level of detail. What I want to do is to go back and edit my data set, this data set in fact, and I'm going to go and get its properties. And what I want to do here is to filter that data. So I'm going to filter it by state name, which is here, and that's going to be a parameter. Click OK, and now you should see that I've got a parameter up here called state name, and I'm going to look at its properties. I don't want to allow any blank values, and I actually want to hide 
the parameter because we're not actually going to use it. What I am going to do is set a default value. And I'm going to add a value in of Florida. So if we don't pass the parameter in, it will default to Florida. And I should be able to run that report now. And there we are. And it looks like we've only got a small part of Florida, but you can get the idea of what's going on. So I just need to go back and refine what I'm doing here. And this is going to take you a little bit of experimentation to get the size of the states that you want on your map. That's probably overdone it now. One more go. What I'm going to do now is save this report to the SharePoint server because I'm using reporting services in, in integrated mode. I'll just click on the button here, save as, and you can see I'm going to put it in my reporting folder here, and I'm going to call that AW State Sales. That's fine. I'll just minimise this for a minute. If I go back to my SharePoint portal now and refresh the page, you can see we've got the new report here. So what I want to do now is modify the report I created last time to be able to call this report based on the value of a state. So I can just select from the down arrow here and edit it in Report Builder. We'll open another copy of Report Builder so we've got both reports available to work on at the same time. So here's the report I had last time. If I click on this now and right click on um, one of the uh, states that are there, I can see I've got this option Polygon Properties here. There's an action that I can apply to any polygon and I can go to another report. So all I need to do here is browse to that report, which is the state sales we just created, hit open. What we need to do now is to pass parameters into that report. We have the parameter in state sales and it's called state name. So that's the name of the parameter. And the value you want to pass in is the state province that we've got for this report. And that's all we need to do. Hit OK. Now let's run the report and see if it works. Click on Florida. Well, actually, I won't click on Florida because we know it's going to default to Florida. Let's try Texas. And we are in Texas because I can see little yellow markers around the Dallas region. Now, that's not the best use of uh, mapping data you'll ever see in the world, but it does give you an idea from the little green and red splodges that we've got here that it is possible to do this pretty quickly and that Reporting Services does integrate pretty well with OLAP data, considering that they've come from two different sources. And moreover, users can do this themselves with a little bit of training. I've been Andrew Fryer. Thank you very much for listening.